trivia question. Which 3D printed construction company built one house and raised $58 million? If you answered Diamond Age, you'd be correct. Today, we're going to take a look at the limited amount of information that Diamond Age has released online and do a little competitive analysis on how they stack up against some of the other companies in this sector. This video is sponsored by Ventures Equipment, but more on that later. Like the other companies, Diamond Age seeks to solve the labor problem. Labor costs have been skyrocketing with no signs of slowing down. And young people aren't entering the construction labor force like they used to. Now everybody wants to go to college and study engineering to be like Elon Musk. So if you have all these engineers and not enough construction workers willing to do manual labor, automation is the only solution, hence the sign. So far, so good. And I think their goal of automating 55% of the labor is a fair goal. It's not 100% as in clicking a button building a house, but 55% is an ambitious target that hopefully with their funding they'll be able to reach. At first sight, their system looks a lot like the other gantry systems that we've seen, but you might notice they have three rows on the top or the x-axis. This allows them to have multiple systems mounted onto the end of their machine at once. Their factory in the field concept is based on 26 different arms or pools that can be mounted onto the end of their system. It's great because the gantry system goes around the build area. So if you have a machine that's able to navigate through this entire area with precision, why not have more than just a concrete extruder at the end helping to alleviate some of the manual jobs? 26 sounds like a crazy ambitious number. I like that they made the printing take three days. This is really honest of them. A lot of companies will say that they can print a house in 24 hours, but those are usually eight hours a day spread out over at least three days, sometimes four hours a day over more. Generally, they're only printing one or two feet at a time. So I really appreciate that Diamond Age just didn't go ahead and say we're going to do the whole thing in one day. Uh, it's a little bit more honest. So now we've seen two different systems mounted. We've seen the extruder and they have the quality assurance tool. This probably uses LiDAR, something like that, to create a digital model of the as-built. And this is great because you have the plans, but the construction plans and the as-built are usually two different things, and many construction companies don't really create an as-built that represents what was completed. Rather, they have to work off what was supposed to be completed. Okay, so now we see the third, and this is a big one, the subtractive manufacturing side. It's like CNC, so instead of having a person go in and make cuts into the concrete, they have a machine with a saw that'll do all of the cuts for windows, plumbing, electrical. This takes away some of the benefits of messing with the concrete while it's still wet. A lot of companies use manual labor during the print so that they can remove sections while it's still really malleable. but. Automation is automation, so if you're removing people, that's great. All right, now we have a fourth element attached. I'm not really a fan of how they're using the same model over and over again. One of the biggest selling points of 3D printed construction generally, since cost isn't typically one of them, is the customizability. So if you're selling, say, seven homes, you could have seven completely unique models customized to the person living there. This takes better advantage of the unique capabilities of automation and 3D printed construction, rather than just copy paste. Now that we get to some of these other subjects, the other 26 tools, it seems like a lot of these are more like pick and place rather than a fully fleshed out automation system. For example, the roof single installation, uh, the roof trusses, a lot of these things that require, uh, they're different subcontractors on the job, but one system that could pick something up, place it, screw it in, would probably be sufficient, especially because you have things like roof scan as a separate line item than the uh, quality control arm. I'm a little bit confused on the use of having seven printers or why they picked that number at once. It seems like it would be just as efficient to use one that goes onto the next site. Uh, you do have the 26 different pieces attached to the printer, but those are the cheapest part for them, realistically, uh, compared to the gantry system, which is going to need to be on heavy concrete anchors. 
Another thing they really leave out of this video is the challenge of moving those gantry systems, setting them up, getting them level. Uh, that's no easy feat, and it takes quite a bit of effort in terms of, uh, just like regular 3D printing, if you're not level, you're going to end up with a pretty crappy print. That was their early renderings, and that's how they raised the first $8 million. With the $8 million, they 3D printed one home, and from there, they used that as a demonstration for their investors to raise an additional $50 million. This is a huge number, and it's something that's really only possible in America. The other companies around the Middle East and Europe have a really hard time raising that amount of money, even though they've printed many more homes than just one. Let's meet their team. Diamond Age has a people-first mentality, and I think that's the right way to think about it. Often when I'm recommending which printer people buy, I say look at the team behind the printer rather than the machine itself because they're all capable of moving X, Y, Z axis, but it requires a lot of hands-on effort, training, and even support down the road as you experiment with new locations, new materials. So you definitely want to pick a team that you'll like to work with going forward. It's not hard to create a purpose-driven business and attract really talented people People want to solve problems for society. It gives our lives meaning. This is actually one of the most important sections of the entire video because you see their mixer pump system. It looks like it's being loaded. This material is already wet. Uh, so we don't really see the mixer pump, but they have a delivery system going from uh, lower to higher, which is great because when you're pumping, through the hose and you start to get up to the upper layers of the house, the pressure in the hose builds up a lot. So if you can have the more potential energy by having the material up higher, then it feeds better down into the system, kind of like a water tower. A lot of the remaining manual labor when you're 3D printing a house is in the mixer pump system, keeping it loaded and making sure that you're uh, print parameters are going to be sufficient given the ambient weather conditions, temperature, humidity. Printing in a warehouse is much, much easier than printing on site because you can control those variables. I really like what they said about the most valuable part being their people. That's 100% true because all of this technology is a work in progress. It's an early industry with a lot of R&D to go. So no matter how special any company tells you their system is, it's their engineers who are working on improving it further that really matter, not the systems itself. The systems are in their infancy stage. Uh, the people are going to be what brings it into maturity. Ventures Equipment, my channel sponsor, is a silo mixer pump solutions provider. As I mentioned, the mixer pump is one of the most challenging parts of the 3D printed construction process, and it requires a lot of manual input generally. Ventures equipment uses a silo, so instead of loading small bags of concrete, you load one ton bags, and their mixer system has an enormous rotor stator, which really gives you a great homogeneous mixture. Not only that, but it can pump up to 3 8 inch aggregate. Check out Ventures equipment at the link in the description and see how their silo mixer pump solution could help your 3D printed construction job site. They're saying the US market is short 7 million homes. I'm not exactly sure, but that sounds about right. They mentioned they don't work out of an office, and that's really important because there's really no office work that needs to be done yet in this sector. They're not serving customers, they're creating their product. So they need engineers on site. There's no reason to have anybody that's not getting their hands dirty on the team. They plan on building their first units in Arizona. This is a great place to do 3D printed construction because they already have a 3D printed house with habitat completed. So there's a little bit of a past precedent from which they can go to the municipality and win permits. It seems like their first big project is going to be done with Century Communications. This is a public company, so it'll be interesting to see maybe it'll affect their share price if Diamond Age is particularly successful or otherwise. Their first project with CCS is going to be a 72 home project in the Phoenix Metro. I wonder if they're still looking to build in Phoenix as it's been one of the hardest hit regions. Uh, the home prices in Phoenix have been crashing and their inventory has been going through the roof. So we'll see if this ends up being an ideal place for them to build. At the time of recording, CCS was trading at $52, so uh, that's the starting point. We'll see what Diamond Age can do to impact that. 
72 homes doesn't really have too much of an effect on a massive home builder like CCS, top 10 home builder. So it's not too much of a risk, but it's enough homes to realize some of the economies of scale rather than having all of the fixed costs, sunk costs that come with just printing one home. Here they say their goal is to make the homes look identical to stick built houses. I honestly think that's a terrible goal because it's very unlikely they'll be able to complete that at a cheaper cost basis than the traditional houses. If they built something that couldn't be constructed with traditional construction, uh, something really custom, something with a lot of curves, something completely brand new, then it's much easier to make the argument that this wouldn't have been possible without 3D printed construction. Innovation is not easy and that's why the first 72 homes are really going to be an uphill battle. Realizing the benefits of automation take a lot of time, like flat screen TVs, technology isn't cheap in the beginning. So a lot of the promises they're making are promises of the future. They're hoping that with their innovation and research, they'll be able to get the costs down. And I think that's possible through automation. That's why I've dedicated my career to construction automation. Eventually, someone will come up with a solution implementing technology to speed up the construction process. Will it be Diamond Age? Time will tell.